Well hey there folks and welcome back to the Hop House. It's Eddie here, it's time for another beer review. It's the Hop House, we like good house music, we like hoppy beer. Uh, if you haven't done so already, like, share and subscribe to this channel and share the love. Okay, as I said, we're going to do another beer review today. Uh, we've got New Year on the way in the next couple of days and we say goodbye to 2020. Um, and this beer I'm actually really looking forward to because it's an award winner. It is a big award winner. Um, I can't call this a virgin beer review because I have tried it before. I managed to sneak a quick half a pint in before um, the barrel went in it. Local pub to me. Uh, back in the days when you could go in pubs, they were the days when I was a lad. Um, so what beer am I talking about? It is this one. It's a, from a local brewery to me, Salopian Brewery, um, based on the north side of Shrewsbury in Shropshire. And it's their Paper Plains. A bottle of their Paper Plains. This was a Christmas gift I got in a um, beer box, a box of bottles. It's 4.6%. Um, in the volume, it's a 500 milliliter bottle. It feels a lot heavier though. It feels very heavy for a 500 milliliter bottle. Um, it has been refrigerated. It's been out of the fridge um, probably about half an hour or so. Um, but it's pretty chilly in the kitchen anyway because it's, it's cold outside, baby. It's cold outside. Now this has won, it won it in 2019, which seems an awfully long time ago now, but it actually won the Supreme Champion at the International Beer Tasting Awards. Um, so it's beaten a lot of beers from all over the world and it was the Supreme Champion, Salopian Paper Plains. So if it's a Supreme Champion, it's good enough for the people around the world, it's good enough for me and this channel and for you guys to check it out as well. Uh, so, Salopian Brewery is where you can get it from. I think it comes in a case. They have, they have all different sort of uh, darker ones called Black Label beers, um, and they're all a bit super special compared to their core range. Uh, some of their core range is very good. The Oracle's really nice, and the Hop Twister, if you like hoppy beers. Um, their Shropshire Golden Band, which is their sort of session bitter. 3.8%, pretty decent. All right, you can see a bit of uh, steam, uh, a bit of smoke coming out the top as I took the bottle off. Whoa, I, sh I should have done that. Uh, all right then, let's get it into the glass and see what we get. I'm using the old moot cider glass so I can give it a swill about. Now oh, look at this, look at that. It's quite hissy and fizzy, I have to say. I can hear it hissing away like a good one. Wow, serene. Now this is very New England IPA-ish. In fact, I think this is supposed to be a style of a New England IPA. Um, I haven't really done any New England IPAs on the channel yet. When we delve more into craft beers, uh, we'll look at other New England IPAs. But they are meant to be hazy and hoppy and almost sort of fruit juice bomb like in their flavour but appearance wise it looks like stale urine which doesn't sound very nice at all does it um, that was a joke by the way I'm not being serious but it is very hazy it's very uh, cloudy and uh, sort of orangey looks like um, yeah it's sort of like a glass of fruit juice actually uh, and that's what New England IPA styles are like I'll pour the rest in there just in case it was bottle conditioned and there's some sediment in there. Um, but as you can see, it's not been refined. It's very hazy, it's very cloudy. Uh, it has got a white head that's now disappearing. Um, but it looks the part of a New England style IPA. Uh, New England being the east coast of America. So sort of Boston where they like coffee, uh, that kind of area. Uh, right then, just give it a quick swill around. There you go, look at it. Can't really see much of the lacing at the minute because it's quite close to the top of the glass. All right, well, certainly looks the part. So we'll get this into there and we'll give it a whiff and see what we can sniff. I did actually have a little whiff of the bottle when I opened it. Um, so I kind of already knew what it smelled like. I shouldn't have done that. But hey, I will, mate. We all make mistakes in life. That is tropical as it comes. So, grapefruit, 
tons of citrus, a bit sweety, pineapple-y, mango-y smell. I think this is going to taste like fruit juice. Um, now, some most breweries um, that do the New England IPAs use the hops and a bit of oats as well to get the creaminess, uh, but also the fruit flavours that come in a New England style IPA. Um, some companies, some breweries do cheat and actually put like fruit concentrate in, so it's, it is almost like a cordial, I suppose, um, or a fruit juice. But um, I'm hoping that this is just hops because Salopian Brewery do do some very hoppy ales. So if they've added any fruit concentrate into this, I'll be a tad disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. Right, I'm gonna shut my mouth now. Well, actually no, I'm not gonna open it and get some beer inside of it. So, bottoms up and down the old hatchet. Whoa, whoa. Holy smoke tea. Gonna go again. Wow! Wow! Ooh. That is very different. Um, it's very nice, but it's very different compared to some of the other beers I've reviewed on the channel. Uh, it's very, very New England IPA style. So, what you get is. What they tend to do in New England IPAs is they dry hop it, so they hop it at the back end rather than putting it in the boil in the middle of the brew. And um, you put it in the boil in the middle of the brew, you get bitterness and you get it goes down the side of the tongue and it sticks at the back of the mouth. Excuse me. So you you sort of original American IPAs. West Coast, Californian style IPAs do that. Things like the Thornbridge Jaipur that we did, the um, Brewdog Punk IPA, Oakham Citra, all those types of beers are the hops are rammed into the boil um, and the bitterness lasts in the aftertaste in the back end. New England IPAs dry hop and sometimes double dry hop at the end, um, but by using some of the, the hops that they use, probably American sea hops, your citrus, your cascade, centennial, um, by adding them dry hopping, not boiling them, um, and also adding oats to the beer, it creates a fruit juice esque taste, definitely aroma. That does smell like I've opened up some grapefruit and pineapple juice or something. It's very fruity. Um, so, what am I getting at here? So, in the taste, th there is bitterness, it goes down the side of the tongue, it's there because it's American hops and probably American sea hops, so it's going to be bitter, but it doesn't last. You have, um, it's a bittersweet balance and the, the balancing that off of each other so down the sides of the tongue goes a bitterness down the middle and at the front is sweet well f f the front of the tongue is probably where you get the oats so it's a bit it's not like drinking porridge but it's sort of you can appreciate it's a bit thicker feel mouth feel uh, in there but the sweetness is what sort of remains it remains in your mouth and then at the back end you don't get a bitterness like you would do with a West Coast style IPA but you get like a dry tartness that you would get and an aftertaste of a fruit juice so like a tangy tart sort of aftertaste but it holds there because I can still taste it now but it's not a bitter aftertaste like you get with the um, adding the hops to the boil so it doesn't just go wah and dry your mouth out in fact, this style of beer probably actually gets your taste buds, gets your saliva going more than the bitter aftertaste stuff. Um, so, whilst it's in your mouth, um, it's just going side to side and bashing all over the place with different flavours and combinations and it's just really good. Now, I will have to say that when, as I say, I'm not doing this as a virgin beer review because I did try this beer once before. Um, I only managed to get half a pint of it. It was towards the end of the barrel, so it probably wasn't the best example of this beer. Um, 
And I'll be honest, I, I, I tried it and I thought, this was alright. World's best supreme champion. Nah, not for me. However, having tried this now, bottles, um, whether it's bottle conditioned or not, I don't know, but... Well, it's certainly not been filtered, so I don't think it really matters if there's any actual yeast in the bottle or not. It's all there in the in the drink, as you can see. If I swirl it around now, you might be able to see it do its thing. Look at it. I'll tell you what it looks like when you swirl it around. Um, my other half got, a few years ago we were at the uh, Shrewsbury food festival which when those, those things are allowed to happen if you're anywhere near Shrewsbury and Shropshire go it's cracking weekend and um, she got bought as a present this little bottle of sort of pink champagne and when you shook it about it sort of it whirled about a bit and it looked like it had things inside doing you know it looked a bit flashy a bit like glittery inside that's similar to how this beer swirls around when you swim it look why are you picking that up on camera? Otherwise, I'm going to look like a bit of a dope. Yeah. The head's come back. Look, lacing is amazing. Look at it clinging to the side of the glass. That is lovely. So, is it world's best? Is it? Right, what do we know about the beer? It says here, um, suitable for vegans. Contains uh, malted barley, oats and yeast. So I was right about having oats in the beer, which a New England style IPA should have. It is, however, 4.6%. So it says here, it does say on the side of the bottle, it's a session New England IPA. Because a lot of these New England IPAs come in at quite high ABVs. You're looking like 6 7%. The ram, uh, ram full of hops at the back end, the dry hopping, and um, it bumps up the, the alcohol. So. Hmm. So yeah, 4.6% is a session New England IPA. Um, so it says here, Supreme Champion at the International Beer Challenge 2019. Um, it is a session Nipa, Nipa, New England IPA, uh, hopped with Citra, Mosaic and Nelson Sorbin. So you've got the sea hop there, you've got the Citra. You've got my favorite hop, Mosaic. Remember we did the dry neck. Um, that was my favorite hop. And Nelson Sorvin is a New Zealand hop. Let's say, yeah. Salopian Paper Plains. That has changed my opinion. First time I tried it, I thought, hmm, fair to middling. Um, but maybe it just wasn't in good condition because it was towards the end of the barrel. However, that, I can see why this has won awards. I really can. That, and I also think that um, my taste has changed in beers. Uh, obviously, I really like the hoppy stuff. I do love the bitter, hoppy, back-end hop it in the boil. Um, but since these New England IPAs have, have come into fashion, they've, they've come out of nowhere and taken over a market, and it's become a little sub-genre, a sub-category of its own, um, I really appreciate, you know, the, the New England IPA style. So uh, I have had a few New England IPAs that, that are really, really nice. And I'd say that this is definitely one of them. It's, it's banging, it's cracking. Great beer. It really, <clears throat> it really is a play on the senses. So, Salopian Brewery, Google them, go get a pack from them, they'll deliver it to you. Or if you're anywhere near Shrewsbury in Shropshire, go to the brewery and collect it. Um, they do have open days as well, so when you're in a place where pubs can open again, go down there, go get some. I like that enough, to, I'm going to give that a two thumbs up, I really am. I'm really, really impressed with that. I thought I'd review it for the channel, um, and I thought... It was okay. No, I think it's, it's bang on. I think it's brilliant. Bob on two thumbs up. I think my tastes have changed, and I think I had some beer at the back end of a barrel when I tried it in a pub. Thank you very much for tuning in. 
Hope you all have a great and wonderful and happy new year and a great start to 2021. Uh, like, share and subscribe to this channel. And we'll be doing some more house music stuff as well in January. Some more music stuff and I might even review some alcohol free beers because it's dry January, right? Don't know what all that's about. Ciao for now people. Enjoy.